Hello, and welcome back to Pete's Behavioral Insights and Theories, aka Pete's Bits. So if you're a behavioral scientist, choice architect, mind hacker, whatever you want to call us, getting a job with Uber is pretty cool for two reasons. One is that Uber is a company that seems to really value behavioral economics in making their business better. They're constantly trying new types of economic and psychological interventions to try and incentivize their customers and their drivers to perform better. They even employ a chief of economics within the company itself. But the other reason why you might want to work for Uber is that because the whole company runs through the app, you have access to so much more data. So in today's video, I want to talk about some of the interventions that Uber is already using to change your behavior and their driver's behavior. So here are five psychological nudges that Uber are using. So the first innovation that Uber uses is perhaps the most important one of their entire company. It's what Rory Sutherland argues is the key innovative insight into Uber's success. And that is simply the little car that you see on your screen that tells you where your driver is before he picks you up. Social psychological research has revealed that people hate uncertainty. And uncertainty was perhaps the biggest cause of friction for people using taxis. You didn't know when the driver was going to arrive, and this meant that you had to wait in the rain with your luggage, feeling really horrible. Instead, with Uber, you see the car approaching, you know exactly when he's going to arrive, and you can walk out your door, and as Rory Sutherland says, it kind of makes you feel like a bit of a badass. Now, if you work for an innovative company, perhaps this is an insight that you can take from Uber. This idea that customer experience is highly worsened by uncertainty, especially when you consider how uncertainty might be leading to other undesired behaviors, like waiting in the rain, for example. The second psychological insight that Uber uses is actually to do with their tipping system. You'll notice that after you complete a ride using Uber, you're prompted to tip the driver, and you're often prompted with three different bubbles. These bubbles give you three suggested tipping amounts, and by manipulating the numbers within these bubbles, Uber is able to influence the amount that drivers get tipped significantly. The main behavioral insight at play here is something called the middle option bias, otherwise known as the Goldilocks effect, after the story of the girl and the three bears who chooses the porridge that's just right. The idea with the Goldilocks effect is that when we're presented with multiple options, people tend to often congregate towards the middle option as it seems the safest. So Uber's been able to rigorously test and manipulate what numbers they display within the three bubbles and especially what number is displayed in the middle option of those three bubbles and thereby change how much their drivers get paid. Back at home again, much better. So the third behavioral insight to do with Uber is to do with the pain of paying. The whole experience of using Uber's app is actually very frictionless and a large part of that is because paying is so seamless and easy. There's lots of behavioral science research into the pain of paying. For example, one common finding is that cash is more painful than card, so people generally will spend less if they pay with cash than if they pay with card. And what's an even less painful paying experience than card is paying with Google Pay or PayPal like you do on Uber. These are one tap buy transactions and just like that the money is gone. By making the payment method less painful, people are likely to spend much more. Now the last two behavioral insights to do with Uber are actually not nudging you, but nudging the drivers. Unless of course, you are an Uber driver. So it turns out the most valuable resource for Uber are its drivers. Jonathan Hall, who's the head of economic research for public policy and legal at Uber, says that Uber competes vigorously for both customers and drivers. So Uber has to work really hard to design that platform in a way that makes driving for Uber better than driving for one of their competitors like Lyft or Ola or whatever ride sharing company seems to be prevalent in your area. And so it turns out one of the best ways that Uber gets its drivers to stay with their platform is to actually just reduce the amount of downtime that they have between trips. Have you ever noticed that when you take an Uber, it'll sometimes say that your driver is completing a previous trip before he comes to see you, or perhaps before your trip is finished, you see that a notification pops up on your driver's phone saying that another trip is waiting for him nearby? This is a behavioral intervention designed to reduce the downtime of their drivers. The previous head of economics at Uber, Dr. Chen, said that the whole system is designed to be automated so that it runs like Netflix. In the same way that after you finish an episode of Netflix, the next one automatically starts loading. With Uber drivers, it's the same idea. Before they finish their first trip, the next trip is already preloaded for them so that there's no downtime between trips. Because you see, downtime is a decision point. Downtime is when the driver has the option of switching to Lyft or to Ola, or has the decision to just stop driving altogether for the day. By automating one trip after another, after another, after another, not only do the drivers perform more trips and make more money, but also there are less decision points in that whole time frame, and therefore they're 
far less likely to switch to one of Uber's competitors. You can think of this as a sort of default bias because it's taking advantage of what Richard Thaler calls decision inertia, the decision not to decide. As anyone who works in behavioral science intervention knows, setting automaticity and using defaults is perhaps one of the most powerful measures you can use to influence people's behavior. And the final behavioral insight that Uber uses with its drivers is loss framing. Famously from Kahneman Tversky, we know that losses loom larger than gains. So whenever we frame information in a way that people are scared of losing something, they're far more likely to follow through with that behavior than if we were to frame the same information in terms of gaining something. Uber uses this idea with their drivers to extend their shift length. When a driver attempts to log off from the app, Uber prompts them with a notification saying that they're only a certain number of dollars away from some kind of arbitrary income goal for the day of driving. It's a kind of almost there intervention. This intervention also utilizes another bias that we know from social psychology, which is proximity to goal bias, which is this idea that if you tell people that they've almost reached a goal, then they're far more likely to try and follow through until they reach that goal, even if the goal is totally arbitrary. So by Uber telling their drivers, hey, you're almost there, you've almost earned this arbitrary dollar goal amount for the day, then drivers are more likely to go back into the app and do a few more trips. So that's all of the behavioral insights from Uber that I had for you today. Are there any more that you can think of? Let me know in the comments below if you can. And if you enjoyed today's video, please can I ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you really like the video, could you give it a thumbs up? I would really appreciate it. All right, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.